Hi, it's me, David. In this video, we will sort out the air phase portion of the mission statement for Army Group North. In reviewing the air units, I discovered one issue that dealt with their ranges. The individual air group's ranges were not consistent in the air operational group. This seemed impractical, so I decided to rearrange the units so they were more in line with the other ranges, in their air operational group or AOG for short. I used the spreadsheet to do this reorganization, for Luftflotte 1. The following, is the steps I took to shift 6 air units around, to fix this perceived problem. Note, I simply clicked on the Luftflotte 1 icon on the map, and then started editing, on the right of the screen, the specific unit path, to the one I wrote in the spreadsheet. The process is actually easier to figure out and understand, than doing it all in your head. It also keeps a record to review later, as we continue the game. Each turn's column can be hidden, when we go to the next turn, so it will keep the spreadsheet short in width. By the way, even though Bill loves and respects Guderian, my favorite is von Monstein. As he mentioned in his book Lost Victories, OKH was at odds with Hitler, when it came to the planning of Barbarossa. He was not even consulted on the specifics of the operation. Yet he seemed to have seen its inherent flaws when he got his operational orders in May, only one month before the war began. In his assessment, he felt, the road to Moscow held the largest amount of troops to be captured. He thought the armament production to the east of Moscow, once controlled, would have crippled the Soviet army, even if only temporarily. Finally, he felt that Moscow was not only a very important political hub of Soviet power, but a transport network that if cut off, would have seriously affected any Soviet counterattack. For this reason, he did not agree with Hitler in focusing on three separate advances on Leningrad, Moscow and the Caucasus. He thought the major panzer effort should have been to Moscow itself. The question before us is, can we correct our mission to make this happen? Let's keep his idea in mind. But, for now we will secure the North. Okay, now we see the final tally of our editing the organization of Luftflotte 1. This is by the shifting around of 6 air units. You can see how the ranges for each air unit is now grouped better. When the specific AOG is sent out on a mission, the concentration by its similar ranges will be more effective, and therefore will have better results. Now let's look at the transfer of air units. I have avoided this subject before, but now we have to cover it in some detail now. There are many issues here to consider, so I will try to keep it simple. We will need to see the different ways to transfer air units. We will also need to understand the implications of transferring to a friendly airbase, or transferring to one just captured from the enemy. Finally, we will see some game issues that we will have to deal with, that are not as straightforward as you might think. Okay, let's look at Flieger Führer Ostsee. It was automatically moved forward, as we instructed from the last air phase in turn 1. It moved to two airbases. In one of them, Liapaya Air Base, it helped to create an overcapacity that we can't tolerate. You can see this, by the red color on the base icon. So I decided to send this AOG, from the current two air bases, to Vanspils. It will have easy access to the Baltic Sea, and reduce the capacity limit at Liapaya at the same time. So, there are many ways to transfer air units. We can click on the AOG, and select the units we want to transfer. Then we can hover over the air base we want to send it, and hold down the shift key, and then click the right mouse button. Afterwards, we can decide to send it as planned, immediately, or we can cancel it from the dialog box on the right. If we choose planned, then it will be sent in part or whole, as the base acquires enough supply to handle the air group. This means some or all of the units will go to that air base at any time. When moving to a friendly air base, immediate is okay, but when transferring to an air base you just captured from the enemy, it's better to use planned since we don't know how much supply it has. The other easy way to move air groups, is to move their air units, all at once. Here we click on the air group itself, then hold down the control key instead of the shift key, and simply left mouse button drag a box around the air base or bases, we want to transfer the air group to. There are other methods, but these are the two best and easiest ways to do this. The issue I encountered with these transfers is, as you see the red highlighted text, it appears that the transfer is hopeless. But in fact, it will work, if we use the plan transfer. Sometimes it even works when you use immediate transfer instead. Many times it will simply not matter, as the unit will still be sufficiently supplied to conduct missions, even though the red text suggests that it isn't. I have no way of figuring out how that is. Yet. 
I will try to revisit this later, with more detail. In the next example, I am moving the fighter groups of GG-54, close to the front lines for ground support, and to support the bombers. Here I am using the second method we just discussed, but using the immediate transfer instead of planned. You would think that is going to be a problem. But in fact it shows, two green colored bases, after the transfer, suggesting it is supplied. Now I will do something a little more tricky. Since we already moved JG-54, the rest of one Flieger Corps, will have to be moved by their own air groups. Otherwise, we could have moved the whole AOG at once. I wanted to place the fighters in those forward air bases, so that is why I moved them separately. I am going to target three air bases for the move. They will be far enough behind, to leave bases available for the recon units, that are dedicated to each of the three armies of Army Group North. I will transfer the bomber units immediately, since I won't be needing them as much as I first thought I would. Just to mention in Franz Halder's war journal, it states that at 13.30 hours on the first day, the Air Force reported 800 aircraft destroyed. The real count was over 2,000. This showed how much they did not know, the extent of the devastation. What is also interesting is that at the end of our last game turn, June 28, Halder in the same journal, was concerned with the pocket of Soviet troops in front of Kalis getting away, as what we will have to deal with as well. Now I will transfer the three recon groups, Kaluft 18, Kaluft 16, and Kaluft Panzer Army 4, to forward positions. This will include Kaluft North at Mamel, the transport air group to Kaunas, and Kaluft 2 near Tilsit. To add more scope to the Soviet Air Force, we need to understand that even though their frontline forces were decimated, it didn't really matter. Not only did they get support in the way of newer P-39s from the Americans, but with the help of the U.S., they added 15,000 aircraft to their inventory, by the end of the year. Another interesting fun fact to show the unique character and innovation of the German military, they learned from captured Soviet aircraft mechanics, how to better handle planes in very cold weather. One example was to mix highly flammable fuel with the crankcase oil, so the Luftwaffe could start its aircraft engines, in the extreme cold of the Russian winter. Back to the game, after some play testing I found a flaw that I assume was rectified in the updates. As I tried out some scouting missions for the Luftwaffe, even at 24,000 feet, I got huge amount of losses due to flak. In one mission of 174 planes, I lost 47 of them, all except three were due to flak. The information I gained of Soviet troop placement was minimal at best. I have to admit, this is disheartening, when we see already the effort the German player has to put in to even have a chance to win this game. At some point if the revisions makes the game realistic for a German win, I may start the game over again. For now, let's play this out, to learn the game. Also, this will not stop us from doing recon, in the Soviet pockets we created. Here we can gain intel, so we can use minimal effort of the ground troops to clean up those pockets, we will need to look more into this later. I did some play testing, to see the results of specific missions, and found some interesting results. As we go over each mission, I will go into it in some detail. I must admit, once again this was a challenge to figure out. Now after many hours working through this, I feel confident we have a set of missions that will support the mission statement for Army Group North. I set the missions up ahead of time, to make it easier to review. Let's start with the two recon missions, to see what is inside the two pockets we created. This will allow us to spend less time, sending ground units searching around, to try to find the enemy units. In the first recon mission, you can see the important data was outlined, so you can follow the same setup that I used, stop the video at each dialog box, and do the same as with the first one. You can see with the two sea patrols, I used the entire Luftflotte, because it gave great results in play testing. I will most likely use ground support, as a default for every turn, on every front. The two recon missions, in front of 4th Panzer Army, were a real challenge in getting good results. I wanted to assure that I could spot as many enemy units as possible, but losing the fewest aircraft as well. Here is a small worksheet of my attempts, as I play tested the different combinations. I did this to learn how the mechanics of the game works, so I don't consider this gaming the system. What we glean from this, we will use in the future, since I don't have time to do this kind of playtesting, all the time. Okay, 
I am assuming you have removed all the default error directives from Luftflotte 1 that existed before we made our own. If not, do so now. Also as you see I am putting the entire air group on hold, and priority 2. I will decide where those air units will go, instead of it being done by the system. Also don't hit the air assist button. We are doing this all manually. One last thing before we end this video, I am showing the previous issue we had, with the JG-54 fighter group I moved to the front lines. You can see that even though the bases and fighter numbers are very similar, the results of base supplies are not. We see that a combination of ammo, supply and air support, decides how many planes can be effective. It looks like a newly acquired enemy base can handle about 30% of its actual capacity before having serious issues. I have pushed that percentage much higher with other bases, but we can at least use this as a guide. Well, General Von Lieb should be happy with us, since we worked hard to support his troops on the ground, with our forces in the air. Reinhard and Von Monstein will also be happy, when they get the reports of enemy troop movements, after our recon missions are done. But until we know for sure, hold on to your hats, as we start working with Army Group Center for the big push. To Moscow.